Everybody knows how much I love Isaiah Pacheco. Everybody knows how much I think the Broncos screwed the pooch when they didn't draft Isaiah Pacheco in the seventh round because, hey, they had to have Montreal Washington, right? He's really good. No, he's not. He never was. It was a huge mistake. Now, as I wrote today, denversports.com, and I want you to know there is another Isaiah Pacheco. And what I look for and what made Pacheco stand out at Rutgers is the fact that he's, the fact that he's angry. And he's fast. He's 4240 fast. And I love seeing that on film. Then I saw Isaiah Pacheco down at the Shrine game. It was in Vegas that year, only a couple of years ago. And I absolutely loved what I saw from him down there, taking kind of that game and those practices by storm with that speed and with that anger. You can't tackle to the ground, so you didn't really see that. Um, but you definitely saw that anger. Now, I'm here to tell you there is another. His name's Jalen Wright, he's from Tennessee. He's not a 4-2-40 guy like Isaiah Pacheco is. He's a 4-3-40 guy, and he chooses violence. And I dig that about him, man. Every time he gets the rock, he's choosing violence. Every time that he could run out of bounds, he's lowering his shoulder. Every time that a defender thinks that he's going to go down with an arm tackle, he runs through that tackle. So you get some of that Pacheco vibe. It's not a one-for-one comparison because Isaiah was just different. He's just different. But I watched this Tennessee running back again. Jalen Wright is his name. Jalen Wright. I want a draft that features Jalen Wright on day three, probably, let's say, fourth to seventh round. Um, I, I'll get I'll get a better idea from scouts. Like, where's Jalen Wright going to go? Probably day three, no doubt. He's not going to be a, a first or second round pick or not a third round pick. Probably fourth to seven. And I would say right now maybe it's even closer to seven. Which, again, people might say, why do you want a seventh-round back? Isaiah Pacheco was a seventh-round back. Terrell Davis was a sixth-round back. And I'm not comparing Pacheco to TD or Jalen Wright to Pacheco to TD. But we know that that's a bogus argument. Why? And it's one of the reasons why I took personal offense. Like, seriously. Seriously took personal offense when my own coworkers right here on the fan, guys with microphones, were like, why is Cecil so upset about a seventh-round pick? That's why. That's why. You got Montreal Washington, absolute garbage pick. Nice player, okay? Corporate don't email me. Well, that's like, that's a garbage pick, okay? Absolute terrible trash pick. And you pass on Isaiah Pacheco, who might be the best running back in the league, okay? You've got another one, Jalen Wright, Tennessee. That's the name you need to know. Go to YouTube now. Don't YouTube scout. Ozzie Newsom told me don't YouTube scout many, many years ago. Uh, but for fans out there that are on access to the coaches tape, you're going to go watch some highlights. Watch some highlights. I think you'll like what you see. You definitely see speed. He's not as instant as Pacheco. Pacheco is like instant anger and instant speed. With Wright, there's a there's another gear. What I like about Wright is he's really light on his feet, and when he hits that gear, you see it. Like it doesn't take him too long to get up to top speed. It's not like he's wasting time or wasting motion, or he's one of those guys that has build-up speed. Usually those players that have build-up speed have a longer gait. They're, you know, kind of the, the legs are stretched out a little bit more. They're not as good changing direction. With Jalen Wright, you have a player that does change direction well. You have a player that is light on his feet. It's one of the reasons why it's tough to bring him down, just like Isaiah Pacheco. So Jalen Wright is that answer. I want a draft that features Jalen Wright on day three, Jaden Daniels on day one. I want Jaden and Jalen. That is the plan. That is the plan for the Broncos to win, to push for the playoffs in 2024 and push for Super Bowls beyond that. Jaden Daniels at quarterback and Jalen Wright at running back. Sorry, Javante. Again, nobody loves Pookie more than me. Small school guy. Now, he was a Harvard guy. He was a Laramie County Community College guy. So (laughs) I think Javante is probably a thousand times smarter than I am. But I'm I'm here to say, like, I'm sorry. Like, this this league is not built that way where you're just going to mess around with your heart all the time and be like, man, I love him. I love Javante. See ya. Jalen Wright's better. Okay? Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin's a great story. You can't have him as a full-time back. He can't be a featured back. I like Jaleel McLaughlin as a part-time player. I like him as a pass catcher. He needs to be better as a pass catcher because he had more yards per carry Then he did yards per reception. I think yards per reception were 5.1, which is terrible for running back. It needs to be double that. And then as a runner, it was 5.4 yards a carry. He got more yards when he took a handoff than when he got a pass. 
That's got to change. He's got to be a 10-yard-to-catch guy, not a 5-yard-to-catch guy. Jaleel McLaughlin isn't the answer if you want a ground game that can threaten people. If you want a ground game that can intimidate people, if you want a rushing attack where you can dominate, where you can control the point of attack, where you can grind down and wear down an opponent, when you can make an opponent hate playing you, when you can make an opponent absolutely despise facing you, they hate playing you because you're going to beat the hell out of them. And they know it. You're going to line up and you're going to smoke them. You're going to line up and you're going to crush them. You're going to line up and you're going to take care of business. You get Jalen Wright, you can do that. You can't really do that with Javante anymore. Sorry. Again, nicest guy ever. Love him. Absolutely love him. I'm not in this for my heart. I'm not in this so like, oh, it's my favorite guy ever. Like, there's some guys that are a little different, you know. As Peyton Manning would remind you, I was the president of the C.J. Anderson fan club. We were a week into training camp, and I said, and I already didn't like the Monte ball pick, and I'm glad Monte turned his life around. I'm very happy about that. And I always give Monte credit. He was very nice to me, just like Trevor Simeon. Simeon was very nice to me. Listen, we've got a job to do. As long as we don't get personal, I'm going to call Trevor Simeon a slappy. Trevor thought it was so funny he called himself a slappy at multiple press conferences right in front of me, but Trevor Simeon was always good to me. Monte Ball, I was in New York City during the draft. It's story time with Cecil Lammy, KJ. So I was in Radio City Music Hall for the draft, and I was broadcasting live on the airwaves. I think it was for ESPN Denver at the time. And uh, Monte Ball was picked, and I was like, this is a terrible pick. This is an awful pick. This is terrible. What are the Broncos doing? My producer gets in my ear, and it was Drew Spivak, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you know how Drew is. Drew gets in my ear and goes, hey, uh, Monte's on hold. He's... You're waiting to talk to you? I was like, oh, hey, we go to the, uh, you know, whatever hotline we had. And it's like, time to talk to Monte Ball. Monte, welcome to Denver. (laughs) And Monte was very nice to me, okay? So I always give Monte Ball credit for that. I appreciate that. I got a job to do, right? I watched the film. Monte Ball was washed up, man. Monte Ball wasn't going to make it in this league. I was a week into training camp. I said it on ESPN. I said, CJ Anderson is best back here. CJ's mom heard that. Texted him the next day, CJ and I connected uh, at practice and and became fast friends, if you will, bowling partners soon after that. So, again, listen, sometimes this stuff's a little bit different. But you know what happened when CJ couldn't get it done? You know what I was saying? You got to get it done in a different way. Javante Williams, I love him. I had him as the number one back in that draft. Everyone, and I mean everyone, had Najee Harris as the number one back except me. I had Javante Williams. As my number one back. He's amazing. He's also likely to never be the same again after a multi-ligament knee injury. I'm not here to like sit and wait. Oh, we're just hoping one day Javante's healthy. No, man. (laughs) It's a young man's game. Running back? Running back is a young man's game. Get him out of here. Get someone in that can make plays, that is fresh, that is young, that doesn't come with that injury history, that is larger than Jaleel McLaughlin. McLaughlin's just too small to be a featured back, okay? He's just too small to be a featured back. He's a great kid, great story, love him to death, amazing energy. Like, you talk about just focused on the right things. Jaleel McLaughlin is focused on the right things. I'm focused on winning. I'm focused on a guy that can get it done at the highest level as a full-time featured back. I don't want a committee. I don't want a running back by committee. I want a guy to be, I'm the man, and oh yeah, Jaleel, give me a breather. That's what I want. And I don't even want that guy to give him a breather. I want the coach to be like, hey, come off the field. You just had an 80-yard run. And watch Jalen, right? And it's going to be games. Now, again, it's not like Rutgers was playing the, the greatest schedule either. Because you look at his game against UConn, you look at his game against Kentucky, you look at his game against Florida, um, you see some really good runs and big time runs. I think that one against UConn was like an 80 yarder, right, right at the beginning of the game, get it on the 20 yard line, boom, 80 yard touchdown, house call, Jalen Wright, let's go. So 4 3, wakes up, chooses violence, runs violently. Fast, I think he gathers a little bit as a receiver. So I would like to see Jalen Wright. A couple of things with Jalen Wright at the pro level. First off, pro weight program, put on about 10 pounds of muscle. So now he's about 220 at 4'3". 
You got a 4'3", running back, 220 pounds of muscle, wants to kick your ass and clean up the receiving a little bit. Like, he, he gathers a little as a receiver, so when he catches it, it's not as clean as it needs to be. He needs better – scouts would call it a hand snatch. Like, he needs to be better at just, like, ripping the ball out of the air instead of letting it come into his chest, right, body catching it sometimes a little bit. I'm going to tell you the truth because the truth is all that matters. And the truth is belligerent to some, but it is that which what it is. It's the truth. The truth of the matter is Jalen Wright's probably going to be a day three pick that the Broncos could get. Nay, swipe that. Correct that from the record, KJ. The Broncos need to draft Jalen Wright. I told them to draft Javante Williams. I told them via the airwaves. It's not like I told them specifically. I said on these airwaves, on the fan, Draft Javante Williams. They did that. I was ecstatic. That's done. Move on. It is time to draft Jalen Wright. Day three pick. Let's flip and go Broncos because you got to run the ball. You're going to have a rookie quarterback. Hopefully it's Jaden Daniels. If it's Jaden Daniels and Jalen Wright, I I mean, whew, you talk about cold pops, right? Because I always celebrate the draft after the draft is done, a little, little cold pop, whatever. I don't know what kind of party I'd have if it was Jaden Daniels. I don't, I don't know. That'd be a hell of a party. I'd, I'd invite you all, right? Let's go. Draft party. Let's go. Broncos. Now, wide receiver is going to look a little bit different. I've got some uh, clues I need to tell you about, and I'll do that next. The Denver Broncos are not going to spend money on a wide receiver at all whatsoever they're probably going to trade away Cortland Sutton and Sutton has improved his trade stock summer stock since he had those 10 touchdowns this past season and I don't want to see Cortland Sutton go but again as I said in the last segment this isn't about my heart I'm not in football to be like hey let's just be all heartfelt about everything that's not the way it goes in this league the way it goes is it's the business of football man you might have heard that before on this uh, on these airwaves. Not football business. It's the business of football. And the business of football dictates that Cortland Sutton's probably gone. Jerry Judy's your number one receiver. And then is it Brandon Johnson that steps up? Is it Jalen Virgil? Do not forget about Jalen Virgil, App State's finest, and a player that when this team dummied up and made the mistake of drafting Montreal Washington instead of Isaiah Pacheco, I said, you just got the best returner you could in Jalen Virgil. Jalen Virgil is a type of guy, if Marvin Mims develops, I'm talking about three receivers here, but if Marvin Mims develops in the way that he should as a receiver, take the returner job off his plate because Jalen Virgil is really dangerous He's really good. You never needed Montreal Washington. You always needed Isaiah Pacheco. And now, if you're the Broncos at the wide receiver position, Jalen Virgil can be a dangerous weapon for you. And remember, it was a meniscus injury for Virgil. Uh, It wasn't any sort of, like, multi-ligament, ACL, MCL, PCL, whatever. It was meniscus. So, he's cleaned up. He's good to go. Jalen Virgil is dangerous. He's a weapon for this team. And nobody even talks about him. I think you should talk about him. Check out at denversports.com my wide receiver state of the roster article. Wide receivers is out. Running back's probably coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. But I look at these wide receivers, and it's like, okay, they're not going to spin on a wide receiver. I just told you about Jalen Wright in the last segment. I don't think that you are drafting a receiver. Maybe wrong, but I don't think that's the case. You might be drafting a tight end. Lord knows you need to get a weapon at that position. But when it comes to wide receiver, if Mims can develop and step up his game, now you got a speedster who's got some Emmanuel Sanders to his game. And, yes, E. Gundui and Emmanuel Sanders at his finest was a number one receiver. Marvin Mims could be that. Maybe not this year. Maybe it's in two years. But the potential is there. Dirty, filthy words, Mark Schleris says. The potential is there for Marvin Mims to be more. He's got to be better than just a nine-route guy. He runs two routes right now. He runs a go, and he runs a fade stop, where it's like, I'm going to go, and then I come back to the ball. Like, that's what he does. He doesn't do anything else. And it's unfortunate. I asked Joe Lombardi. Sometimes I think Joe doesn't like talking to me. (laughs) I asked him about Jaleel McLaughlin. I was like, hey, he gets the ball like 90% of the time when he's on the field. Is that a tell? And Joe Lombardi gave me the standard like, well, we're working on that. 
And then after the season was over, I asked Joe Lombardi at a press conference. I said, hey, uh, Marvin Mims, what's he going to do to learn routes? <laughs> and he's like, well, I just work on his route running. Like, okay, okay, Joe, baby, Joe, I'm not your enemy, man. I'm here, I'm here for you. I'm here, I'm here for this thing. Let's do this. And if you're Marvin Mims, you got to be a much better route runner because he doesn't know what to do now. He's got two routes. That tree doesn't have a lot of branches, okay? He's a two-route runner. He needs to be much better. Brandon Johnson, amazing. You're talking about this talent, Brandon Johnson, my ball mentality, sideline awareness, body control, uh, the ability to make circus catches seem routine. Brandon Johnson, big Brandon Johnson guy. You kidding me? This guy out here, Brandon Johnson, he could be the number two I don't want to say number one, but number two receiver that you're looking for. If Marvin Mims doesn't do it, Brandon Johnson will do it. I guarantee that. You got no problem there with Brandon Johnson. The kid's amazing, amazing playmaker as well. So, like, it's under the radar. People think the Broncos wide receivers stink, right? Maybe fans like Marvin Mims because he's a rookie and he's young and he's super fast and he's a returner, a Pro Bowl guy, whatever. I look at the situation and I say, okay, Listen, Jerry Judy's got to do it. He's got to just put it up right now. It's put up or shut up time, make or break year, whatever you want to say for Jerry Judy. There is no doubt. Sean Payton loves him, so whatever. Put a pin in that. Cortland Sutton's dealt. Uh, most likely gone via trade. You probably get a fourth-round pick back for him, maybe a third-rounder, late third, something like that. We'll see what happens there with Cortland Sutton. Okay, don't want to see him go, but that's the way it's going to happen. Marvin Mims needs to be better. If not, Brandon Johnson is there. And if not, Jalen Virgil is there. Right. And I'm not going to necessarily get into Michael Bandy, who's just a slot, maybe a good slot, but, you know, just a slot receiver. I'm not really going to get into Philip Dorsett. You know, oh, he's a speedster, like futures deal, whatever. It's like, eh, OK, a guy like Traquan Smith can always come back. A guy like Lil Jordan Humphrey can always come back. That's the Saints, guys. It's the Saints connections with Sean Payton. So you have an opportunity there to change some things. But the receivers you have may be just the receivers you have, you know, <laughs> What is it, uh, gone in 60 seconds when the cop says, a brother's love is a brother's love? <laughs> I've always loved that line of like, hey, it's simple as that. The wide receivers you have are the wide receivers you have. Sorry, Broncos country. There's no move for a wide receiver out there. These are the guys you got. These are the guys got to make it happen. And we'll see if they can do that. The Broncos need to remember from today's show, Draft Jaden Daniels. For the love of God, get your quarterback. Draft Jalen Wright. Get your running back because you missed on Isaiah Pacheco. There's a new Isaiah Pacheco. His name's Jalen Wright. Look him up. Tennessee. And the wide receiver, a brother's love is a brother's love. Wide receivers you got are the wide receivers you got. Ain't nothing going to change except Sutton getting traded. Anyway. You hear that sweet Ronnie James deal? You know that means I'm out of here for today. Be back tomorrow. You may be watching me on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you never miss a vid. I appreciate you all for helping us grow our YouTube channel, stemforsports.com. He is KJ. He's the man of the box. I'm Cecil Lammy saying, appreciate you all. Look out. And would you please stay frosty?